Hey everybody, how you doing? How, how's Token 2049? Having fun? Cool. Um, I'm, I'm Nick White, I'm the COO of Celestia Labs, and we're building the first modular blockchain network. And uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what that means and, and generally what uh, this new paradigm in modular uh, blockchain architectures is all about. The title of my talk is The Dawn of the Modular Blockchain Era. So let's just jump in. So I want to sort of start by framing modular blockchains in the broader context of the history of crypto. So um, obviously everything started with Bitcoin in 2008 um, and it sh showed that we could actually build these things called decentralized applications. Uh, and then in 2013, Vitalik introduced Ethereum, which extended the functionality of blockchains. And now uh, we're entering a new era, which is the modular era introduced uh, in 2019 by the co-founder of Celestia, Mustafa Al-Bassam, that introduces uh, an entirely new architecture that will revolutionize uh, blockchains once again, make them extend their functionality, make them more scalable and useful. So one way to kind of understand this at a high level is that Bitcoin was sort of like a uh, calculator. It, had, it kind of just does a few limited things. Uh, so it doesn't make it very, it's useful for one specific purpose, but it's not like, generalizable to other use cases. Ethereum is like a computer where uh, it actually doesn't specialize in any one thing and you can write a program that runs on Ethereum to do whatever use you, you need it to do. And then uh, Celestia and modular blockchains are sort of like a cloud computer where um, rather than just being stuck on one single machine, you can have multiple machines run in parallel. You can have a really extensive scale because of this new modular architecture. So I'll explain what I mean uh, as we go through this. So specifically, what is different about modular blockchains? So uh, originally, since Bitcoin, every layer one blockchain has been built in a monolithic uh, design. And that means that all of the functions of a blockchain uh, are combined into one single protocol, and they're all done by the same set of nodes. And then in a modular blockchain, you, we, the insight is that actually you can separate out these different uh, functions into separate protocols, and those protocols can then be plugged into each other to uh, build an application. And so um, those functions are execution, settlement, and consensus, and data availability. Now, I'll talk a bit about the uh, benefits of modular blockchains. So one of the first ones is that, um, unlike monolithic blockchains, they, you can scale the amount of transactions and the, the block size with the number of nodes in the network. So as more people join the network and run more nodes, you can process more and more transactions. And this is very different than a monolithic blockchain because in a monolithic chain, you have a fixed block size or gas limit like Ethereum has. And that means that once you reach that gas limit, you can't process more transactions, and instead you have to increase the fees, right? And we've all been there, we've paid, I personally have paid like $200 gas fees on, on Ethereum. Uh, and that, that's obviously not a usable uh, model. In a modular uh, design, you can actually increase the block size, and that means that as there's more demand to use the platform, you can actually increase the supply so the, the price and of, of fees to use the blockchain can remain constant. Um, the next thing is that, going back to this diagram, the modular blockchains, you don't enshrine execution into the layer one. It's its own separate module that can be swapped in and out. And what that means is that you can run any kind of execution environment on top of a modular layer one. So, you know, with, with EVM, it already has Ethereum virtual machine enshrined in it. So you can only write applications for the EVM. Or same with Solana. Solana comes with the Solana virtual machine, C-level, and you can only write applications in that uh, VM. And so this is sort of like, to use an analogy, imagine if you have a laptop and it's, you know, a, a Windows laptop, but you want to run a Mac app. You have to get a whole new laptop or computer to run that application. So what's nice about modular blockchains is there it's just like a raw computer on which you can run whatever operating system you want uh, for your application. And then last but not least is modular blockchains give you the uh, something called shared security. So when you want to launch your own blockchain, rather than having to 
bootstrap your own consensus network and also uh, you issue your own proof of stake coin to secure your chain, you instead plug into an existing consensus uh, and proof of stake protocol that secures your chain. So you inherit security from this base layer. You can pool security with all the other ecosystems of chains. And then on top of that, because you share this uh, security layer, you can interoperate with other chains um, in a trust minimized way. And you can't do this in a monolithic framework. Uh, so just to recap the benefits, we have scalability, box size increases as the number of nodes, we have shared security, you can deploy a chain and interop with other chains uh, with high security, and finally, uh, sovereignty or customizability. You get to choose what kind of operating system or like VM to write your application in. And to return to, uh, to bring it full circle to the analogy that I started with, um, th web, like the modular stack is sort of like the Web3 equivalent of the cloud architecture in, the, like in Web2. And so in Web2, you know, you have a data center um, like AWS or Azure, and they provide uh, this very scalable resource of compute, right, that anyone can come to and tap into to deploy a custom virtual machine or, or server to run their application. They can scale it up and down and consume as much of that compute resource as they want, right? Now, in, in Web3, with the modular stack, you replace the data center with a data network like Celestia. So Celestia is this raw resource of block space on which any developer can come and run a custom blockchain, also known as like a, a virtual blockchain, also known as a rollup. And that can house sort of like be the infrastructure for them to run whatever application that they want. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about how all of this works under the hood. So the, the, the main difference is that in a monolithic system, right, um, if you want to run a full node to verify the chain, you have to download and verify every single transaction. And this inherently doesn't scale because someone who's running a node has a finite amount of bandwidth to download transaction data, and they have a finite amount of computer resources to actually verify each transaction. So what that means is once you've you, you reach sort of like a, a limit to the amount of transactions they can download and verify, you can't scale the network beyond that. And that's why monolithic chains have that fixed block size. Um, in a monolithic blockchain, you scale both the verification or the execution of transactions and the uh, sort of bandwidth and like the downloading of transactions with two separate technologies. So the first one is instead of verifying every single transaction, individually, you verify a single proof that proves that those, execution, that those transactions, when they're executed, results in a certain uh, state. And that's, that's what roll-ups are. They're basically a way of scaling execution by not having to redo uh, the verification of transactions. And then on uh, the top is how you scale the bandwidth side. So even when you, when you use a rollup, you still have to verify that the data behind the rollup has been published. But you don't actually need to know what it is. And that's, what, that's called data availability. And um, the naive way of solving data availability is that you download every single transaction. Um, and the solution in the modular stack is you use something called data availability sampling, where you just sample randomly from the transaction data. And once you've sampled enough times, you have uh, a statistical guarantee that all the data has been published. So now, in this new model, you have a way to um, verify uh, transactions that does not increase, the amount of work you have to do to verify does not increase with the amount of transactions that you're trying to process. Um, and so this is, this is really, really powerful. Um, and this is just a little slide to demonstrate uh, erasure coding, which is one of the core technologies, uh, sort of cryptographic primitive that powers data availability sampling. And so uh, you'll notice that if you try to scan each of these QR codes, you can they both work. Even though the QR code on the right is missing a, a whole chunk, um, that's because there's redundant data within the QR code. So that even if part of it is hidden, you can still scan it. 
And it's a similar technology that Celestia uses to encode its block data so that if someone tries to withhold data or hide data in the block, they have to hide a, a really significant amount. Uh, and that makes it easier to detect data withholding. Um, and I just want to spend a little bit of time because uh, there's a kind of a, it's very easy to mix up data storage with data availability, but they're actually completely different concepts. So data storage is about storing data so that you can retrieve it later. Data availability is about um, seeing and ensuring that new data behind a new block was actually published. You don't actually have to know what that data is, but you need to know that it, it has been published publicly and can be seen by anyone if they want to. And so an analogy that I like to use is like data storage is like uh, canning food and packing it away in a warehouse. And later on, you can go and like find that can and <laughs> open it up and eat it. Uh, the data availability is more like an all-you-can-eat buffet, where you want to serve out the data for anyone to come and have a taste. Uh, and it's, it's, it's fresh. Like You don't need to keep the data around, but you want to serve it out so anyone can see it and, and taste it. And this enables a fundamentally new kind of uh, node that could not exist before, which is called a light node. And what a light node is, is um, basically uh, a type of node that allows you, gives you basically the same security guarantees as a full node, but you can run it on a device like a, a phone. So the, the end vision of this is that in the future, anyone with a phone will be able to directly verify Celestia and the rollups that are built on top of it. And this is really important because uh, users running nodes are what, what uh, enforces the rules of a blockchain. Um, and that's what makes blockchains special is that they're verifiable computers. So here's like a photo of um, one of my colleagues, Josh, uh, running a light node on a phone in Paris uh, in July during Modular Summit and, and ECC. Um, and another aspect of the modular era is that it changes the social dynamics of the blockchain community. We've been for the last 10 years in this monolithic uh, sort of mode where each L1 chain is sort of like building its own complete independent stack and competing and not really sharing innovations with each other. And this is fundamentally sort of a zero sum uh, mindset that fosters maximalism. And in the modular era, what's, what's so amazing is that you, know, you split these different functions up and people can innovate on them in parallel and those different innovations can be layered on top of each other. So it's a collaborative, positive sum environment that doesn't pit every team against each other. And so um, it, it, what's really amazing is that this is really catching on and there's been uh, tremendous growth in the last year um, of the modular ecosystem. And um, it's not just, you know, it started out with just the sort of the four uh, layers that I introduced. Uh, teams working on each one of those, like solving each one of those layers. And it's actually expanded now into even more uh, verticals. And there's new sort of like modular protocols coming out like shared sequencing or like uh, shared prover networks or even coprocessors. So like the, each module of the, of the, or each layer of the modular stack is sort of like its own service um, that can be bundled up to build more compelling applications. So like the modular movement is really like picking up steam. And it's really exciting because we're all collaborating and sharing kind of like the slide that I was uh, talking about just before. And uh, just to end on this, like Celestia is uh, very close to launching mainnet, where we're going to launch in the next couple months. Um, and that's going to be a big moment because it will be the first layer one chain that is modular and supports data availability sampling. So all the benefits that I just mentioned, like it's the first chain that can scale with a number of nodes in the network. So we're going to provide this really um, decentralized, scalable block space. Um, but that's, not, that's just like the first sort of like chapter in this broader journey. And our next major milestone that we want to reach in several years after launch, our North Star is to achieve these three things. So the first is we want to scale our block size to one gigabyte. And that sounds like an absolutely crazy block size, but we think it's technically possible. And we have a roadmap to get there. And if we get there, that means that we truly have just uh, insanely abundant block space that hopefully we can onboard millions and millions of people onto Web3. 
And um, the next one is one million roll -ups. So we want to uh, enable a massive uh, Cambrian explosion of, of roll-ups to uh, experiment and innovate. And similar to like what Ethereum did by um, enabling smart contracts that enabled people to uh, experiment and innovate at a new, a faster rate at the application layer, we want to do the same thing for the execution layer. And we think that same, in the same way that Ethereum, that enabled us to discover DeFi, NFTs, DAOs, all these compelling use cases, we think more innovation at the execution layer is also going to um, uh, enable us to discover net new use cases that have not been discovered or tried yet. And then the last thing is uh, 1 billion light nodes. So we, what we want is we want to uh, embed light nodes into people's phones, either in their wallets or their browsers. And in this way, um, we'll be able to scale and secure the gigabyte blocks, because remember, there's a, each node contributes to the scalability of the network. But also, we're going to build this really robust, decentralized uh, network of users who are directly verifying the chain. And that will make Celestia extremely decentralized. Um, and so that's where we want to go next. And um, this is, I'm, I'm on Twitter, so uh, if you guys are interested in modular blockchains, um, I talk about them all the time. We also have uh, the Celestia account. Uh, Twitter is at uh, Celestia org. Um, our website is celestia.org. So um, if you're interested in any of this, come and talk to me after this. I'll be hanging out for a bit. And um, yeah, hopefully you guys are inspired to build something in the modular space or participate in some way. So thank you very much. Thank you.